harder. Anna is working to approach a different need in the world today. She is a co-founder of Eden Invitation and Evangelic Outreach uh, to Christians, culturally defined as the LGBT. Anna is a graduate of the Franciscan University of Steubenville, and she has spent the last seven years in active ministry with youth and adults through NET Ministries in the Archdiocese of Milwaukee. Please, please welcome Anna. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Uh, it's, it's a privilege to be here today. Um, I'm going to keep my remarks brief, uh, but I guess first is the, the fascinating providence of our God. Um, about 15 years ago, uh, I, I stood, knelt actually, about a three minutes walk away uh, in the field house here at St. Thomas University uh, at a Steubenville Youth Conference. Uh, and I came into this conference uh, with braces, uh, ill-fitting clothes, half of them from the boys' section, uh, I came into that conference uh, more a fan of Legos than Barbies. I came into that conference uh, with a childhood desiring to be a boy. Um, a childhood a, a little bit just kind of disassociating with um, the biological sex that I was born with. Um, but at this conference, uh, experiencing the Eucharistic Lord, experiencing and encountering the dynamic life of the church, I knew that I was home. And so began a journey <laughs> as, a, as a young teen. Um, and eventually that, that desire to um, have a different sex biologically resolved itself, um, but not entirely. Um, when I was in high school, I began to experience um, romantic desires for the same sex, uh, something that's continued to persist throughout my life. Uh, but throughout all of that, I had the, the blessing of solid, good pastoral ministry. Um, I had people telling me that I should be praying every day. I had communities that were welcoming me in my vulnerability and that were offering me accountability. I was able to encounter the teachings of the church, the personalism of John Paul II, and to know that my deepest identity was as a daughter of God. And in this cultural age that we live in right now, there's so many questions, there's so many concerns, there's so many different labels and identities that young people are trying on for size. But as we look at the writings of St. John Paul II, as we look at his, his teachings in Man and Woman, he created them. In his 23rd audience, this is what he says. I think that among the answers Christ would give to the people of our times and to their questions, often so impatient, Fundamental would still be the one he gave to the Pharisees. In answering these questions, Christ would appeal, first of all, to the beginning. He would perhaps do so all the more decidedly and essentially, inasmuch as man's inner and simultaneously cultural situation seems to move away from that beginning and assume forms and dimensions that diverge from the biblical image to points that are evidently even more distant. At any rate, Christ would not be surprised by any of these situations. And I suppose he would continue to refer above all to the beginning. And who were we? Who were we there in the beginning, in the cool of the day, as we walked that wild garden? We were male, we were female. We possessed an original integrity of our body and soul. We were aware of the dignity of the other, their equality and their difference. The purpose of that original unity and complementarity. We know that this is all the more necessary in our day that this story, that this narrative is true and it is good and it is beautiful. And that the youth of today deserve to hear it presented in all of its splendor and all of its totality. And so that's a little bit of the story on, I think in your program, it says a message from Eden Invitation. Um, 
so briefly, that's that's why I'm that's why I'm here today, um, and I'd like to to thank uh, the University of St. Thomas, the St. Paul Seminary, the Minnesota Catholic Conference, um, the Archbishop Flynn uh, Catechetical Institute, the Siena Symposium, uh, for for creating a day like this. Um, the more um, as uh, the more that I'm dialoguing with people throughout the country about these topics, about same-sex desires, about gender identity, uh, a common theme so often among the young people is we don't know how to, we don't know how to talk about it. Where is, it's, it's difficult. You know, you look online, it seems like the church is saying all sorts of different things. And so to have the courage to take a stand, to have the courage to open this dialogue, um, I just want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. And also invite you, if, if you'd like to come in and to talk to me, to learn a little bit more about the mission and ministry. Um, ultimately, we want to be a space um, for people of faith, Catholics and Christians, um, who, again, yes, fall in this culturally defined LGBT spectrum um, and maybe aren't sure where they fit, right? They see the cultural ship sailing away. They're standing on the dock, still tethered to natural law, but not really sure do they belong on shore or should they be swimming after that boat. I mean, we want to be there. We want to be there on that dock. We want to be there having those conversations uh, to let people know that they are home. They are home here in the church. Um, and then ultimately, all of us together um, are, on, are on that journey, right, of, of integrating what it means to be male and integrating what it means to be female into our lives. Um, so again, I just want to thank, <laughs> thank you for, for having me here. And if you'd like to... Uh, to learn more uh, about this outreach, um, I'll be available throughout the day. So thank you.